previously on the Adventure Zone. Uh-oh. What happened to Robbie? Robbie has been thrown into the brig. We, we're going to be keeping an eye on him for, for a while. Pringles? Does he love Pringles too much? Was this call for business or pleasure? Yeah, I mean, a little bit of both. I for sure didn't want to be dragged to hell or whatever it is you do. Sir, I know it's none of my business, but I'm I'm curious why you haven't told anybody about about your kids. I w- was a really crappy dad, and I was an even crappier husband. You see yourself wearing a red robe, but there's a, a like a next logical thought that would come from that observation. But when you try to think it, your mind t- just turns to static. It's just tearing you apart and keeping you up at night. And the void fish slams against the wall of its tank, and it's kind of it's kind of scary. You had a baby. You have an egg. A quick, bright light flashes, and a small, quiet alarm bell rings. What a devilish twist! What other mysteries await us down the winding path toward the Adventure Zone? Let it begin. Let the what? let it let it start. It is started. Wait, can I just go. wait? Can I just before we start, start, start? Mm, I want to say started. But just but I went back and listen. Can I just say going back and listening to old episodes? I listened to uh, uh, the last lunar interlude before we did the eleventh hour. I had a lot of cool items I forgot to use during the eleventh hour. <laughs> oh, everybody has lots of cool items that they forgot to use. I was really hoping for that immovable rod you have, Taco, to pop up during the purple worm chase. That would have been neat. But I had a magnetic uh, Don't sphere. Fucking kibitz. Don't like. <laughs> I'm just saying. Back, there's a lot of backseat stuff. Backseat dungeoneer. All right. I, especially like Taco. Taco uses more of his garbage than anybody. That's a good point. I shouldn't. I shouldn't harp on Justin. All right. Let's. Uh, yeah, but you did unhaul a lot of stuff that you hadn't mentioned for a long well, time when you were talking to crap. Everyone. Everyone lived. We're good. Uh, we'll see if you fare as well in this next arc, which which has begun. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, damn it. Um, so things have been quiet. So now, oh, now, now it's begun. Now is this it? It's it started. <laughs> when I said things have been quiet, that was the start of it. Well, actually, oh, Griffin's an hour behind. He's on Central Time, so it actually hasn't started it, for, or maybe it started for us. It begun an hour, an ago? hour ago, and you didn't even realize it. Let me. Oh, uh, you want us to catch hey, you let up, me Griffin? start weaving the story. We'll catch you up. <laughs> weave, weave away, weave master. So. Things have been quiet at the Bureau of Balance since the conclusion of your last adventure, um, which was probably a couple months ago because it is midsummer. And it's actually uh, a couple days from the Midsummer Harvest Festival, which was, if you'll remember, that sick carnival that you went to in that that, uh, first uh, lunar interlude. When we saw the eyes in the skies? Yeah. Uh, It's it's been almost a year since then. Yeah. and uh, so, so the Midsummer Harvest Festival is two days away, but there's actually, weirdly enough, there's no trappings of that festival going up. Like last year around this time, there were bureau employees coming and going and putting up tents and, and erecting booths and preparing decorations and, and setting up little, uh, little game tents. Um, but today, just two days out, preparation efforts have been meager at best. Um, budget cutbacks cutbacks yep oh no uh, wait were we supposed to do it well the three of you actually haven't been oh, helping shit. the three of you haven't been helping very much because the director has had the three of you doing really intensive training like eight hours a day every day oh, um, wait like physical training or just like corporate training uh, physical training, uh, a lot of it taking place in that uh, dojo that the uh, regulators have set up. Uh, you've been working with Carrie and uh, Carrie and Killian and Noel uh, and and some of the other regulators to just like get better. Uh, and that's, I think, the justification for you all jumping up to level twelve in, in your training. Um, right. She's been preparing you rigorously for your next mission. Uh, the particulars of which she hasn't shared. She's just kind of leaned on you in your training. 
And at this point, I mean, it's been a little over a year now. You have a pretty deep personal like relationship, even like friendship with the director. But in the past month, she's been kind of cold to you. She's been like a bit temperature, more... Temperature wise? Or? Like um, relationship wise. She's been really oh, reserved. No. Um, during during training, the friendship that you've you've uh, the, the friendliness that you've seen from her, it just isn't there. She's she's extremely critical when you're in training, and um, she also seems extremely worried. Um, and this morning, while you're on your way to one of these intensive training sessions, you receive a message from the director. Uh, it's time for your next mission to begin, and she wants to see you in her office. Uh oh. Uh, and as you enter, she is uh, sitting there with uh, one hand on her staff and her her face in her other hand. And she looks up as you enter her office and she says, uh, come in. How I are, want you to know, Gavin, I really misunderstood what you just said. And I thought she was holding her staff in one hand and her face in the other. Yeah, and she, she was t- just sitting <laughs> there. She took her face slash off. Ooh, off. off. Westworld. No, she was. Uh, no, she just was. She looks tired, man. Um, and as, as you come in, she says, how are you boys? How are you boys feeling today? Uh, yeah. fine. I mean, I, I drank my protein, my pre-workout protein shake. And now that's for nothing. I've just got a lot of built up protein energy whey, now. Wasted. Whey protein or beef? Both. That's it's, a lot. I call it weef. Um, I've Mer- been, uh, I've been binging, uh, who is this? Orange is the... I've uh, been binging. It was, it's right it's new there. Character too. sounds like that. <laughs> I've been uh, binging. Uh, Orange is a new black. Oh, uh, how is it this season? I, I feel like it yeah. got lost in the weeds a bit. Uh, maybe a few too many characters, but uh, you know, all in all, not bad. Taco, are you well? Yeah, I'm fine. You're not my mom. <laughs> I don't have to tell you everything. She keeps gone. calling us boys. I don't have to tell you anything in my life. I'm fine. What do you want? I'm. I want to apologize. I'm very, I'm very busy. I will say that. <laughs> We've been dojoing the hell out of this place. I, I know, and I'm I'm sorry for leaning on you as hard as I have been lately. I just... I know what's waiting for you on your next mission, and I just want you to be at peak performance. Is it one uh, of those things where it's like either super bad or super good? It ain't super good. Well, you don't know. Shut up. No, Merle's right. Damn uh, <laughs> She reaches into a drawer in her desk and she pulls out uh, a, a blue envelope uh, with a, a fairly ornate gold trim. And she says, um, it's time I tell you boys a story I haven't told you before. Before you enlisted in the Bureau of Balance, before the Bureau was even formed, I foolishly aspired to recover and destroy the Grand Relics on my own. Ooh. I searched for months to locate these relics, but I came up empty, and that's when I received this. And she she holds up that envelope and uh, uh, opens it up, and inside she pulls out a flyer, um, and it's really gaudy. It's really uh, colorful, uh, and it is advertising in big, colorful block letters a place called Wonderland. Ooh. And uh, behind that word Wonderland is a colorful map showing a large circular clearing in a forest called the Felicity Wilds. And on the reverse side of this flyer is a picture of a small copper bell. And it is inlaid with a diamond pattern uh, across its body. And in a, a, a bunch of different fonts, actually, all equally gaudy uh, and ugly, this side uh, with the bell on it reads, The Grand Relic You've Been Looking For, The Animus Bell. And uh, she hands that flyer to you all to inspect. And she says, uh, On this flyer is an image, and it is, in fact, a Grand Relic. As the flyer says, it's the Animus Bell. In When I was doing my investigations, I learned its name, but not its capabilities or whereabouts. But here it was, on paper, with a map included. This feels trap-like, right? Yeah, a little on the nose, isn't it? I mean, I, of course, researched Wonderland before I made my attempt on it. It is a place where, for those lucky enough to be invited or to otherwise be lured into its walls, 
it promised the fulfillment of any material wish, uh, the, the, the rewarding of any prize that its visitors sought out. Hence my personalized flyer here. It is, of course, a death trap, but uh-huh. it, was, it was not without its fair share of victors. I heard stories, uh, mostly secondhand, of survivors who made their way out of Wonderland claiming to have found the prizes that they sought within. But their, their accounts of what is inside Wonderland never matched up, meaning that the contents are somehow different for each person who enters it. One person told of a maze full of undead killers. Another told of a, a tomb of horrors. I was, I was overly ambitious. She turns, her, she's in like a rotating office chair. She sort of turns her back on you and she says, my journey through Wonderland was hell, boys. I faced foes the likes of which I've never seen outside of those walls and psychological terrors that to this day leave me shaken. I abandoned my delve into Wonderland, but only after losing a wager that cost me dearly. With her back uh, to you, she is facing that portrait in the back of the room, the one that uh, uh, I guess, I think it was Taco thought was had some sort of arcane energy around it. And with a wave of her white oak staff, that image in the portrait changes. And the Lucretia that you see uh, she, she's about a 50-year-old uh, woman, uh, disappears. And there is a young woman in the portrait with the same light hair and, and dark skin that the director has, but she looks a couple of decades younger than the director that you know today. And uh, the director rotates her chair to face you and says, that was me not that long ago. I wagered 20 years of my life in a game of chess in Wonderland, and I lost. I'm not a vain woman. I don't care about losing the beauty of my youth, but 20 years is a lot of life to have pulled out from under you. Why did you wager that much? Seems like a lot. Yeah. It was what was necessary to progress through Wonderland. I've, I've known about this place since before you joined the organization, but to tell you the truth, I am terrified of it. Because if I lose you boys in Wonderland, we lose everything. But I think the time has come. I, I know that you're ready. I, okay, this is Travis OOC here. Yeah. I'm having this moment that I have every time I watch any kind of like, like, movie or tv show and like things have happened that some characters know about that other characters don't where i'm just like screaming at them like just tell just be open in communication and everybody tell everybody exactly what happened and i'm sitting here like as travis wanting to tell the director everything that we know but at the same time just not knowing if i could trust her i just wanted to share that moment with the audience or with you guys that i have no idea yeah, is Ma- so Magnus is remaining tight-lipped about what he saw on that piece of paper? Yeah, but it's fucking hard to do that, because, like... Yeah, sure. Magnus is pretty, like, forthright, and I don't even know if I've told Taco and Merle about it. Okay. Yeah, I think that's an important point. I think we need to establish, have we shared our stories with each other or not? Uh, well, I mean, there was a difference between what you guys did on your most recent Lunar Interludes. You can talk about that, wh- wh- you know, whether or not you want. I actually don't know if all of you listened to that Lunar Interlude. So there, you, this may not even be a dramatic irony situation. You may literally not know what happened in the other boys' stories. Um, so that's that's up to you. Um, and we can establish that before we go forward. What have, what have you told each other? Now, now that I think about it, I, I really I am impressed upon dork boy not to say anything to anybody so i guess i still want to keep moxie and mavis a secret so okay that not their yeah, names merle but... wouldn't have, merle wouldn't have shared that then okay i i would say that uh, i don't know has has magnus told them about the void fish conversation i'm gonna say no because i i feel like him being a red robe because he or in the picture not understanding it He's probably a little bit nervous to tell Taco and Merle about it because he doesn't want to incriminate sure. himself. Yeah. Uh, Taco, did you tell everybody about your hot date? Uh, no, <laughs> not probably not. Like, I, I think that not for any other reason than like Taco doesn't sh- seem 
somebody who shares a lot of that stuff necessarily anyway. Like, I don't think just because like taco went on a date, like taco went on a date with death and that sounds yeah. like so cool. Actually, once it's not, I'd say it out loud. Yeah. He may not be able to resist, <laughs> uh, but like, it is, a, it is also he... worth keeping in mind. Kravitz tried to kill Merle for a while there and is probably, and it's, is definitely responsible for what happened to his hand. I mean, yeah, t- I guess Magnus shares responsibility in that. I just don't want I don't want anybody to misconstrue it as Taco being like cautious about talking about his sexuality. It's literally just he doesn't think it's anybody's fucking business. Okay, especially not these three fucking clowns <laughs> <laughs> that have fixed fixed onto him barnacle like yeah. as he tries to save the earth. Well, okay, that's <laughs> that's good to know. Let's let's hop back into the the scene then. Um, the director. The director is like warning. She says, um, Wonderland will try to break you. You will face dangers the likes of which you've never seen. You will face mental and emotional torment. But if you stay together and you trust each other, you can keep yourself from, from losing yourself in there. Listen, I know that you went through some real hell in there, and it sounds like you had a really rough time. This sounds awesome. I okay, cannot wait awesome. to get in there. And On the other hand, it sounds a little dangerous. No, but uh, like there are challenges. I bet you Killian would. Killian could knock the shit out of this job. I bet Killian, yeah. it, the the Grand Relic, the Animus Bell, is still in Wonderland somewhere. I cannot trust Killian to go in and recover it without <sighs> taking it for herself. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Is there some like? buddy some kind of person or thing that's like in charge of wonderland that we're going to get to fight like another big battle kind of thing i only it's just heard- it's been a really long time and we didn't really get to have like a big fight in the oh, 11th you hour have, you and- will have good fights in there i guarantee it i i only heard voices there were there were voices that cool. um, would give me directions but i never saw anybody in wonderland um there were I believe other participants in Wonderland while I was going through it, um, but I never saw them either. Cool. I'm I'm less worried about the fights that you will have, and more worried about your your emotional state being compromised while you're in there. Uh, and then you hear a voice from like immediately behind her chair, uh, and I guess Angus has been hiding back there like the whole time. And he says, "Don't worry, sirs." I'll I'll be on the radio the whole time, and I can help you monitor your emotional state and help keep you calm while you're in there. So don't worry Great. about a thing. You're going to be cool as cucumbers when you go through Wonderland and the tor- tortures inside. And you are? I'm Angus McDonald, a boy detective, and you're a very good friend. Mm, this sounds familiar. Shouldn't there be some kind of little musical sting there when he says that? You know, like, leave it to Beaver theme or something? Nope. Okay. I uh, tousle Ango's hair, and I go, of course I remember Angus. Let me see what you got, kid. How's it coming? Let's see it. Oh, yeah, of course, sir. He casts uh, press digitation and a... Uh, he casts uh, a fucking level zero cantrip. How long has it been? Okay, he this casts... Is the smartest kid on Earth. He casts, he casts a cantrip. He casts a level one, so he casts disguise self on himself, and he looks like uh, he looks like you as a little boy. Or, he doesn't know what you look like as a little boy. He just looks like a smaller taco. Uh, mm-hmm. And he says, uh, what do you think, t- sir? Griffin, Griffin, a taquito? <laughs> <laughs> he says, what do, you th- what do you think, sir? How am I doing? You're still Angus. I wasn't fooled for a second. He transforms back into Angus. Okay, okay. I'll keep it up. It's very, uh, very good, though. You're coming along nicely. Uh, the director says, uh, are you boys ready to go, or do you have any more business before you, you blast off? Wait, we're just, like, jumping right in? Would you rather spend like twenty minutes buying shorts again, or? So I really like those shorts. They were great shorts. You can't tell us anything about the bell. You don't know what it does, or um, what its no, deal it was, is. Uh, when when these grand relics were sort of circulating throughout the general uh, population, uh, there were no accounts of the the animus bell being used uh, for any dark purposes. Whoever had it squirreled it away. Uh, nicely, and uh, uh, it, it it would it never really circulated, so we don't have much information on the animus bell. I I need to ask. I, I've been thinking about it. It's been a while since I've been able to talk to you. 
I feel like if there are other participants in the maze, we run the risk of running into more red robes. I find that unlikely. I, I the red robes obviously, um, to my surprise, are are still uh, in in operation, but there cannot be that many of them. But if we do run into one, what is there anything the bureau knows about them? Anything you can tell us? They are extremely dangerous. They cannot be trusted. If you see one, report it to me over your stone of far speech immediately and just run away. You are not ready. Don't listen to a word they say. They will lie to you to get you to do whatever, whatever they want. But their purposes are evil, Magnus. They are, they are beings of, of pure, concentrated evil. But how do you know? I, I've had my fair share of run-ins with the red robes. And they've all been evil. In invariably. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> I got a quick errand to run before I can leave. Okay, let's 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 get those going then. Oh said. wait, I do have a question. Okay, pop it off, Magnus. What what's the why isn't there a festival in prep? Yeah. <sighs> it will I be was a looking smaller... forward to having some fried unicorn dick. It'll be a smaller yuck. It'll be a smaller affair this year. I'm sorry, boys, but there are Slightly more pressing matters at hand. Okay. Well, thought there'd be a balls. better explanation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little on the well. There just aren't. Got it. Okay. Uh, I jog back. Taka jogs back to his room. And he gets underneath his bed. And he moves some laundry aside. And he moves the half-eaten Reese's Pete cup he left. and Wait, He couldn't finish a whole on. Reese's cup? And now he's watching his figure, and underneath that, oh, there it is. He uh, <laughs> picks up the flaming, raging, poisoning sword of doom. <laughs> that he, <laughs> he gets, he, he he goes and grabs a washcloth real quick and wipes off some of the dust, and then he puts it on his back. Okay. Uh, are you guys ready to go? Well, well Griffin, is is there any chance that Magnus could find where Pringles has been locked up? Ooh, shit. Uh, I mean, he's in, he is in, uh, there is a, a, not a prison. What's the word for like a military, like brig. Yeah. He's in the brig. brig. Uh, and he's been locked up there for, uh, a, a long time. Um, and I think you've probably like tried to go visit him once if only to like, maybe you wanted one of uh, like a dank potion recipe or something like that. Um, but the brig is like heavy lockdown, uh, director's access only or with uh, express permission uh, and and you have not secured that. So you have not been able to visit Pringles. He is on full-blown lockdown. I'd ask for permission. Yeah, can we ask the, the director for permission? We're being sent into hell. We I'd, probably I'd, won't I'd, come back. <gasps> I'd like to say goodbye to my Pringles, please. Um, she says, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, no. Pringles is... Pringles is dangerous. He is affiliated with the Red Robes. He cannot be trusted. I, I, I'm, there's, there's no time. Also, we really need to get this Wonderland mission going. So I'm sorry, but no. You got it. Okay, I just need to go grab something from my room. Okay. I 100% want to break into the brig. Fuck. Okay. Do you tell Dang. the other boys what you're doing? No. Okay. Uh, there are, the brig is in a, uh, we're going to take a quick offshoot then. There's a dome, uh, probably opposite of the dome that the, uh, director's, uh, office and like big kind of throne room area is in. It is a fairly small dome. And when you go inside, there is an elevator shaft going down. It's kind of reminiscent of the dome uh, that the void fish uh, is in because there's just a single small elevator shaft in the middle and it is guarded by two guards. Mm -hmm. uh, And they say, uh, stop right there. What are you uh, what are you doing here? Oh, I I have permission uh, from the director to come. I, I just need to talk to the prisoner for one moment. Uh, we don't accept verbal permission or written permission. She needs to be here in person in order for you to get a trip down to to visit our prisoner. Oh, yes, uh, of course. Uh, just once, and I attack them. Fuck. <laughs> okay. What the hell? I'm I'm attempting to attack them non uh, non fatally. <laughs> uh, okay. How about instead of 
uh, doing a full fight here because I think it'll take a while and it'll be something that the other two boys don't get to be a part of. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's, l- I mean, let's roll a strength contest. Okay. Uh, two different ones. Uh, but I, I'm going to warn you, Trap, if this goes bad, it's going to go fucking bad. I got you. Is this a solo mish? Uh, 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 am, am I, are we seeing this? No. I mean, Travis, it sounds like you were going to get your sword and Merle was going to do something else. It's up to you. I mean, you can tell me now in in fiction, if you can justify it, would you have any reason to follow Magnus around as you guys do your last prep before you go on this mission? M- Merle was just going to go uh, clear his browsing data. So. Okay. No. Gross. Gross. <laughs> um, I rolled... uh, Taco, Taco, what about you? Um, I mean, I think it would help if he had magic users with him, but um, you go ahead and do what you think. This is no. I'm not going to make a run at the Bureau of Balance. No, I'm just saying he would be I better don't... off with us. If he he's not going to do this, he without didn't us. ask for help. He I didn't know. even consult this. This should oh, be a group decision. I know. Well, we may be going on this mission by ourselves. Enjoy. Okay. Taco's good out here. Yeah. Um. So with my uh, bonuses and everything, I ended up with a uh, with a 19 and a 20. Uh, okay, I rolled a 15 on the first one. And a two on the second one. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's just say you uh, subdue them uh, using like the butt of the uh, of the chance lance. Yep. So no no stabbing was involved, but you knock these two guys out cold. I put them in the pocket workshop. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're gonna have to come up with names for these boys earlier because later because now you have captives. Two, two boys. <laughs> Now you just have Pokemon to these two boys. <laughs> so I guess later we're going to figure out who these boys are because now they live in your pocket. I'm going to say the pocket workshop can only sustain two boys at once, though, because I don't want you to have an infinite bag of boys <laughs> that you can just put boys inside. But this these two boys you do have inside, and you just have them now. Okay, so now you've got these two boys and the elevators unguarded. Uh, you go down, the elevator is basically identical to the Voidfish one, and when you go down, uh, there is just a, uh, a a small brig. There are six cells in here, but only one of them is occupied by your old friend Robbie, a.k.a. Pringles, who runs up to the cell when you walk in, and he says, oh, fuck, what did he even sound like? What didn't, I wasn't expecting Pringle play. Wasn't he kind of like a lead back, almost like a shaggy kind of guy? I if not, then yeah. then the months he spent in prison have turned him into that. He's like, Magnus, is that you? Oh, shit. I didn't think I'd ever see you again, dude. Did you bring me my stuff? My Pringies? You know how much I need those to live. Pringles, Pringles I can't be here very long. Why are you in here? I have two boys in my I got workshop. two boys in my workshop. <laughs> um, what do you... I did, why am I in the brig? They didn't tell you? No. I, it was like treason, I guess, dude. I, 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 I'll I, be honest, getting, and nobody, the director didn't believe me. Nobody believes me, but like, it, something had me go all through the Bureau of Balance, even in places I, I wasn't authorized to be, and then I just kind of woke up, and I was in a place I wasn't supposed to be, and then the director arrested me um, summarily, and I, I've been down here ever since. What was the place that you woke up in? It was a dark room, and I was I was right by this big heavy vault door, and um, I I just I know I was I was in the director's personal space. There was some of her stuff back there, um, and yeah, that's that's where they found me, man. Hey, can you what? hey can you can you bring me out of here? No, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, maybe I can physically, but can you do me? Can I and may I? I can you do me a bigger favor? What's that? Can you get me those sweet crisps I crave so much? I, I will get you. I promise I'll stop at like Fantasy Go Mart and get you some on my way back. Um, my body has a deficiency. I know. That. You need vitamin Pringles. I got it. <laughs> Can you tell me anything you remember from before your body was taken over and you moved without your control? I was in our bunk. You remember? Yes. You remember the good times? I do. Focus up, please. And play cornhole. I know. Yes, I remember the cornhole. I have uh, only got like three minutes. I was just in our bunk, and you guys were out on a mission. And I was real lonely, and then I my vision just kind of went red. And then the next thing I know, I woke up. And that's it. That's it. 
I hadn't had any Pringles that day, and so I thought I was in maybe some sort of fugue state. Okay. Um, if anybody asks, I most definitely totally wasn't here. Okay. Uh, what, what happened to those guards upstairs? Oh, they're still up there. Totally fine. Don't even worry about it. Okay. okay. All right. I, I miss. I, I miss us. I, yep. And I get in the elevator. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Griffin Macro, your best friend, your dungeon master, and your local sheriff. Hey, cut out the crime, buddy. Thanks for listening to episode 51 of The Adventure Zone. It is the first episode of the new arc, which I haven't named yet. It's 10.03 p.m. the day before it comes out, so hopefully that will come to me in the next, like, 12 hours or so. Um, uh, I want to thank everybody for listening, and uh, I I hope you enjoy this new arc. Uh, cause I'm excited for where it is going to get to. This episode is sponsored in part by Nature Box. Nature Box, you've almost certainly heard of at this point. They're the ones with the good, good snacks and they send the snacks right to your door. You don't have to go get them. They just like give them to you, the snacks. It, it simplifies and streamlines the snack choosing process. Cause I don't want to look at a bunch of nutrition labels. I don't know what any of that is. What is iron? What is calcium? I don't even know. Nature Box figures that stuff out for me. So I've got a child's brain up in there. They got stuff like dark cocoa nom-noms and peanut butter nom-noms, nom-noms of all varieties, mini Belgian waffles, peanut butter graham jam. Uh, they got uh, cinnamon yogurt mini grams. They got whole wheat vanilla animal cookies and honey Dijon pretzels. So many amazing snacks. Uh, you're you're, you're going to love just, just all of them. If you go to naturebox.com slash adventure right now, you can get two bags of delicious snacks without any of the drunk for free. It's naturebox.com slash adventure. Get your two free bags of bold and unique snacks delivered right to you. Naturebox.com slash adventure. Go get those two bags of snacks, and they're going to be free. Got a few personal messages here. If you want to get a message on the show, just go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron. It's easy to get a message on the show because these folks all did it. Here's a message for Derek, and it's from Dav, Bert, Johnny, and Clax, who say, Hey, idiot. Happy B-Day from your buds. One day we'll all do some magical adventuring, but for now we'll have to settle for real-life shit like rafting, light-up guitars, and general drunken gangle sticking. Gotta Google what that is to make sure it's not offensive. The only thing I could find was a weird blog about dream interpretation, and... Something about League of Legends. So I'm going to assume it's the latter. The rest of the message reads, We miss you, you lanky goofball, but we'll be together again before Dr. Stephen Fox is one part actual licensed physician. That part wasn't as challenging for me. Um, I do just... Happy birthday, Derek, first off. Uh, and just to the rest of your friends, just to maybe tone it down next time so I'm not worried that I'm saying some sort of hate speech in my messages. Got a message here for Jake King Nuggets Lace, uh, or perhaps Lace or Lice? I don't know. Sorry. Uh, it's from Mort, Jadzia, Shananana, Amberly, Theodosia, and Peanut, who says, Happy B Day to the best DM. Yeah, I thought maybe most of those were names from Dungeons and Dragons. Though we can't meet regularly, we do love ruining your glorious D&D vision. Thanks for putting up with the fiery poops, the in-game drunkenness, the real-life drunkenness, questions about who's killable, and the crits on really stupid actions that aren't even a thing. We love you, Jake. Let's get drunk. Peanut commands it. Um, most of that could literally just go on the box for D&D, the tabletop game. It could be like the tagline crits on things that shouldn't be crits and trying to kill every character and ruining somebody's story uh all this and more inside this wonderful book and another message here i want you to visit floraverse that's f-l-o-r-a-v-e-r-s-e dot com it's a colorful open world multimedia web comic slash visual novel slash animated fantasy story experience with fairies flowers and cats all the, basically all the things. Floraverse is a colorful, open fantasy world setting slash webcomic chock full of resources and reference, all in the Creative Commons for free user participation. If you're into fairy birds on adventures, toy cat demons, living paintings, demons warring against angels, strange music, videos, James, videos, James, and animations, or surreal adventures of the mindscape, then Floraverse is probably for you. Who's not into those things? If you like looking at ref sheets of critters or making characters, then Floraverse is definitely for you. Uh, That sounds neat. I'm also into 
uh, Fairy Bird Fighters and uh, Strange Music and Videos, James, I'm going to go sign up for whatever service you're providing right now. I want to thank everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the the ZoneCast hashtag. If you do that, you might end up as a character uh, in this arc. Uh, there's a bunch of them, and I still need names for literally all of them. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, so get in those tweets. Also, we just really appreciate it because we don't pay to advertise the show at all. Word of mouth is the only way uh, that we get new listeners, and you all are super, super great about that, and we really, really uh, appreciate you uh, helping us out. I also want to thank Maximum Fun for having us. They're a great podcast network. You can find out all the shows uh, at MaximumFun.org and just go listen to some of them. There's shows like We Got This uh, and International Waters and Throwing Shade and Lady to Lady. Uh, They're all so great, and they're all at MaximumFun.org. If you want to hear other podcasts that we do, you can go to McElroyShows.com, and you can check out uh, a ton of shows, uh, both podcasts and video stuff. You can find out all of our contact information, again, at McElroyShows.com. That's it for this commercial break. Uh, I'm going to let you get back into it. Uh, The next episode of this podcast is going to be up on November 3rd. Holy shit. That's that's very late in the year. Uh, So we will talk to you then. Bye. There's going to be consequences to to what happened um, at some point, I think, unless you can figure a way out of it. Uh, but if you guys are ready to go, then I guess Good. it's time to go. Magnus, are you freeing your two Pokemon that you've got? Uh, Taco or Merle, do either one of you have any, just uh, out of curiosity, any kind of like... Mind erasing magic. This this conversation is happening at the hangar as you guys are about to. Uh, you guys have sort of regrouped. Yeah. Why do you ask? I just uh, uh I'm. Mm, so we uh, don't know that he did this. He hasn't. Did you tell him? Nope. And did um, you guys follow him? No. Then no. I I may need a couple boys' minds erased and reprogrammed. Uh, if you've got that sh- spell slots, man. Yeah, yeah, they could. Uh, mm, okay, mm, I, I suggest just do that. I mean, like we don't have to. Neither one of us know how to do that, as far as I know. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Never mind. Not important. <laughs> it might come up later. Him, you could give him the uh, the same mind erasure tonic we gave uh, like Jerry and some of those goblins working on the car. Remember that? Remember that special brew? Mm, no. <laughs> what? What was the special tonic we gave them where we killed them? The end. Oh, that's yeah. true. End can we can we kill these guys? We'll kill no, them. no, probably not. Or maybe you hit them so hard. If you hit them, they have amnesia. Did I, Griffin? Oh no. <laughs> okay. um, uh, you are uh, Avi walks into the hangar and you realize maybe this conversation should wait. Uh, and he says, uh, "Oh, hey guys, I haven't I haven't seen you in a while. How you been?" Good. I've I've Good, inv- yeah. I've invited you guys to poker night a couple times, but you never you never responded. What's 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 the deal? I don't know how to play. Uh, he gets a ball ready for you all to hop into uh, and preps the direction of the cannon, and he says, uh, "Oh God, okay. Um, the Felicity Wilds actually aren't that far away, so just get ready to hit the brakes pretty quickly, okay? Okay. Uh, are you guys ready to go? Ta- yeah, yep. Taco." Rest his hand on the uh, the brakes, so he's ready. Okay, a lot more confident than we used to be. Uh, yeah, this is not your first uh, blast off. Um, okay, you all load up into the ball. Avi seals it up, and it drops down into the cannon chamber. And you hear him count down, and uh, you rest your your heads against the back of your seats and prepare for launch. <sighs> and uh, as you fly out of the cannon. Uh, you, you go on not a long trip, but on the way you see some familiar sights. You coast over the, uh, black glass circle that used to be Fandolin and actually over the road from, from Neverwinter to Fandolin where your very first journey began. Um, you, you are, the, the Bureau is almost, uh, right over that area. Uh, and just past that road, there's a vast expanse of pine trees, and as soon as you start sailing over them, your sphere begins to decline pretty quickly. Um, you are dropping pretty fast into this I pull ocean the of trees. Okay, you pull the brakes, and very soon, 
your uh, your sphere uh, starts to slow way down. Uh, and it's it's lowering very, very slowly, almost like an airplane coming in for landing, and it's being brushed by the high boughs of these pine trees. Um, but you're, you're descending slowly enough that it doesn't really present any danger. Um, and then uh, really suddenly you come to a stop, but you are not on the ground of the, the this forest. Um, your your uh, uh, ball took a tumble uh, and has gotten sort of stuck up in a thick bundle of of branches uh, in in the boughs of these trees, and you are about forty feet up, and the hatch is actually facing downwards uh, when it opens up. Although you are strapped in, so it's not like you have fallen out, but you are in kind of a precarious precarious position of being in this glass ball, uh, forty feet up. Uh, and the the uh, sphere that you came down in, in is sort of suspended in these boughs, and uh, yeah, what do you what do you do to sort of extract yourself from this situation, uh, Griffin? What happens to these spheres when we are like when we exit them? Do they like? Oh, uh, they automatically back up? the yeah automatically the uh, balloon on top uh, activates and they fly back up to the base. Got it. How high up are we? About forty feet. I just jump out. Sounds like no problem for the vroom broom. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so I, Merle, you retrieve the the. Is that what it was called? I think it's just called. That's the, what I called it. Okay, what's the command word that you say to get it going? Uh, hang ten. Fuck yes. Because yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna surf on it. I'm not gonna ride it. Say no saddle. more. I'm gonna stand on it and surf on down to the ground. You are living Merle's truth right now. Uh, yeah, you, you hang 10 on the broom. Hang 10! Uh, and you effortlessly make your way down to the ground. Make a perception check for me. Okay. Since you're the first person out. There's a big fat two. Okay. You don't perceive anything. Uh, (laughs) Taco, do you, do you shout hang 10 when you go down? Oh, yeah. I gotta shout the word. Excellent, I, excellent, uh, good. Hang ten! I uh, leap out of the bubble, and I throw the umbra staff to Magnus, Magnus <laughs> as I go. Um, and we I, have gotten close, haven't we? Yeah. I say, it's got further fall, homie. And then cool. as I fall, I take advantage of a power that, as a transmutation wizard, I've had since level ten. I've not taken advantage of oh, it. Oh, man. That's free, that's free polymorph. So I just spread my wings. Holy shit. And turn into just like the most beautiful soaring dove. As Nelly, strains of Nelly Furtado's uh, I'm like a bird. To caress my wings as I fly. I'm like a bird. I want to fly away. I don't know where my home is. And it's just like so yeah. graceful. Yeah. And dew. I'm like flicking dew off the oh, branches as man. I fly. And, um, and I blithely float down. I'm going to do a perception check as long as I'm out here. Uh, that's a big 11. It's a big 11. With an 11, you... Uh, uh, I imagine these events happen fairly simultaneously. When Merle shouts, hang 10, uh, you hear what sounds like a few animals roar. Uh-oh. Okay. Cool. Um, Magnus, you... Uh, so he threw the Umbra staff to you. Uh-huh. As you As you catch it, from him throwing it to you, it jerks out of your hand. Like, it doesn't want to be held by you, and it uh, actually flies down and lands at Taco's feet. It didn't want you to use it. It wanted to stay with Taco. So now you are still up in this tree. Cool. I'm going to use my grappling hook. Okay. Um, And I'm going to attempt to grapple a branch. Basically, I want to, like, anchor the the pod so I can right it. So I'm not just going to drop out if I unhook myself. Yeah, I I don't think this is going to require anything. um, Because you're using this grappling hook, which you can only use once per day. You're fine with that, right? Yeah, I'll forget to use it later on anyways. Yeah, I think you just kind of, like, connect the uh, uh, grappling hook hook to, like, a branch. And then you just lower down. Uh, slowly, like well, Inspector I do, Gadget style. Before I go, though, yeah, I do. Since I'm anchored, I want to strap my two boys into uh, the sphere before I drop out. 
Interesting. Okay. So you're taking that. Are you just leaving the pocket workshop in the sphere or are you just taking no, them I'm out? Taking the, yeah, I'm taking them out. I want to keep the workshop. Okay. You uh, then really quickly, as the boys can't really see the, the Merle and, and Taco can't really see you anymore. You make quick work as you pull these two uncon- still unconscious men out of the pocket workshop and uh, tie, tie them up inside of the sphere. Uh, and that- I do. I want to leave a note in one of the knocked out boys' pockets that say says uh, Lucretia. If I may get out of this, we have a lot of discussing to do, Magnus. Okay. Uh, let's say that you maybe had that note pre prepared because that's a lot of a lot of business for you to be doing up in this up in this yes. tree. Uh, okay. So yeah, you you get rid of your two boys and uh, tie them up inside the bubble. And as you drop down, uh, you hear the balloon deploy, and you look up, and you can sort of see through the boughs of the trees as the sphere floats away back up into the uh, back up into the sky. Should I roll a, a perception check? Everybody else did. Uh, yeah, roll a perception check. It's a one. (laughs) You don't even hear the roaring. I don't see the ground. (laughs) Where are we? Who am I? Um, you realize the roars are actually coming from above you, and there's a a clearing in the bows, uh, and you can see up, and you see that bubble, uh, you, you see the sphere floating away in the balloon, and you look up, and you see in the sky... A a huge beast, Um, and uh, it it kind of flies between the sun and you, just sort of casting a shadow, and it makes it kind of hard to see, but it's gigantic, and it's got these uh, two gigantic wings, Um, and it roars as it flies directly into the balloon um, and (laughs) uh, attacks it, and the balloon pops, and that sphere just falls. Out of the sky, My boys. from about from about eighty feet up, and uh, uh, it falls uh, somewhere else into the forest, and uh, you you hear a pretty uh, gnarly crash, and then this huge beast kind of does a lap up in the sky, and then it comes diving down directly at the three of you. Oh no! I feel. Can I just say? I feel just terrible about this. I feel pretty good about it. This thing uh, comes to a sudden halt. Uh, directly in front of the three of you, and you see uh, it is, in fact, a gigantic beast, and it has two large, scaly wings, and it has a large, uh, scaly head, uh, and it has some some fire sort of uh, spouting from the corners of its draconic mouth, but it also has two other heads. One of them is uh, a, uh, a lion, who is also roaring, and he's got razor sharp teeth in his mouth, and the other is uh, a goat with two large horns on its head, and it's uh, bleeding at you, bleating at you violently. Uh, it is a chimera, and let's roll some initiative. Well, land, land of Goshen. I rolled a 16. Two. 12. Oh, wait. I get a second roll. Oh, sorry, 16 plus 2, 18. Okay. I'd say give it to Travis. That's a 6. Uh, the Chimera's up first. Oh, and can I, just as a free action, switch my dial to fire on my uh, defender's belt? Yeah, I like the concept of you doing that as like a, oh shit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I feel bad about accidentally killing my boys. Uh, I mean, the Chimera killed them. If I kept them in my pocket spot or my pocket workshop, they wouldn't be dead. They may be okay. Listen, with the Chimera hovering in front of us, I'd be glad to go check on them if you want. I mean, just to make sure they're okay. No, I just feel bad. Uh, The Chimera goes first. And uh, uh, it has, again, a dragon head, a lion head, and a goat head. Um, First thing you all need to do is make a dexterity saving throw. All three of you. Uh, that wasn't good. But fourteen for the kid. Nine. Mine was a seven, but I'm gonna go ahead and use Indomitable to roll it again. Yeah. Okay. That's a ten plus two, twelve. Okay. Uh, all three of you get caught up in this plume of flame. Dang. Dang. Um, you try to dodge out of the way, but it is a huge 15-foot cone, so you have a hard time sort of diving. 
Um, and as you're consumed with flame, you take each, you take 28 points of fire damage. But I get Son half of damage. Yeah, you're good. Um, then it uh, runs up to Taco. And with its goat head, it is going to try to ram you. And you know what? It's probably a ram's head then, isn't it? I if, mean, if it has ram's horns, right? Yeah. Uh, that is. If it's ramming things, it's a ram. Yeah, it's a ram then. Sixteen versus AC. Oh, that's gonna do it. Uh, it rams you for eleven points of bludgeoning damage, <laughs> and then Merle, uh, the lion head, is kind of facing you. It's gonna reach down and try to take a bite out of you. Okay. Uh, that is a crit. Uh, Great. It hits you. It bites into you for 22 points of piercing damage. Great. All right. Excellent. Feels great. That was now, a lot of damage. Good work, Kenner. Yeah, yeah. sure was. Do these uh, count as individual monsters or as one monster? Uh, yes. Magnus, you're up next. Wait, what? It's one, huh? It is one monster made up of different parts. Cool. Um, I'm going to attack it. Okay. Where are you attacking it? I'm going to attack at the base of the dragon neck. Okay, so you're going to... With what? With uh, two, my two-handed uh, uh, rail splitter. Okay. Nope, that's not going to do it. Well, let me know. Uh, well, it was a four. No. Yeah. Um, no. I'm going to try my second attack now and try it again. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's probably going to do it. So... Uh, 17 plus 7, yes, 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 yes. Okay, good. Yes. And then I'm going to use Goading Strike. Um, on the, go- on the goat? Strike. To- no, you Well, guys. if you use it on the goat, it dies instantly, because that's a So weakness. it has a goat and a ram. So it has four heads. It has a secret fourth head on its butt. Um, so 11 damage. Plus superiority. And then 11 plus 5, so it needs to do a wisdom saving throw to beat... 16. It has a minus four to wisdom, so it's a negative two. Cool. What? So, so yeah, now it has disadvantage on attacks, not against me, and it takes 11 points of damage. Okay. And now I'm going to use action surge to attack again. Okay. Um, and I'm going to throw the chance lance at the uh, lion's head. Okay. Uh, so that's 13 plus 7. It's a yep. 20. Oh, sorry. 21 because of my giant slayer's ring. Oh, um, yeah. This thing is definitely bigger than you. It's definitely bigger than me. So that's uh, nine points of damage. All right. Uh, next in the order is Merle. I'm going to cast Mass Cure Wounds. Oh, okay. On, on nice. us three buddies. Nice. And it is uh, 3d8 plus my self spell casting modifier. So that's a six, and my spellcasting modifier, I believe, is a three. So that makes it nine, correct? Yes. No. Yeah, well, three d eight is three of those. Okay, so eighteen uh, for each of us. Roll it. You roll it three a, times. I'll roll it three. Oh, times. silly! Can I say roll? Another six. Another six. And another six. I'll be damned. So I was right. Six, six, six. It was a- it was accurate. Eighteen plus three, so we each get twenty one points back. One second, wait. You said twenty one. Yeah. You actually only heal for nineteen. For for some reason, like, just feels a bit off, Merle. Like yeah, you're di- no your divine your divine like connection that sort of fuels all of your power. It feels a bit um, just feels a little bit off, just a little bit weird. So that's that's nineteen points, still a lot, but it's just a little bit off. <laughs> well, okay. <That's> weird. <laughs> uh, All right, so nineteen points up, correct? Yep. Thank you very much, uh, Taco. Well, I needed that very much. Me too, Taco. You're up next. Okay, good. Uh, shall I kill it? Sure, sure. Uh, uh, great. <laughs> awesome. Great. Um. Well, I don't know if I'll be able to kill it or not. But, well, you know, we'll give it the old college try. Because uh, bad news for this uh, son of a bitch is I can cast level six spells now. So um, what's it doing right now? I, I do want to point out, you can cast level six spell 
because you've only got the one spell slot. And I told Dad this while you were in the bathroom, but I am going to be tracking that stuff, unlike the last Well, arc. then, Jesus, Griffin. <laughs> it's episode one, dog. We got a lot of arc left to go. Yeah, but I like, uh, you know that the, the our, our show to this point has functioned on the assumed rest, by which I mean it is assumed that we have rested <laughs> any time that the numbers don't add up, sort of. Okay. I mean, know? we go two weeks. Uh, okay, here. She's going to she's gonna get real down in Wonderland, so I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, here, I got this. I, I'll, I'll try this one. How about an ice storm? Oh, shit. <gasps> A, gra- a hail of rock hard. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, really? Nice. 40 foot high cylinders centered on a point within range. So it's basically just like a big ass ice storm, and you got to succeed in the dexterity saving throw. I probably also have to succeed in that saving throw, don't I? Uh, are you a creature? <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, he's a I creature. So, I yeah. mean, he. Yeah. In, we got to, like. Yeah, but I got spell shaping. So you don't like got spell shaping thing. anymore. I cannot stress this enough. You gave that up when you switched to transmutation. I never. I wouldn't say switch. Okay. All right. Well, I don't spell shape anymore. Well, he's turned into a hard ass. Uh, Thirteen yeah, doesn't do it. No. Madness, how'd you do? Trout. Is it dexterity? Yeah. Uh, so it's fourteen plus two, sixteen. Uh, yes, yeah, so that does succeed. Perfect. Fifteen was what we were looking for. All right. Uh, then. Uh, so what do I do? You're going to take. 2d8 bludgeoning damage and 4d6 cold damage. Man. All right. So let me do the cold damage first. Really glad I dodged. Me too. Four. Six. Six. Four. Wow. Devastating. 20. 20 cold damage. And then let me grab that d8 right quick. Justin is reaching for the metallic bag with win- within which he keeps his die. Let's see what happens. I'll do a good job. That's what happens every time. Six. Jesus. And four. So ten. T- thirty. Yeah, thirty altogether. That's a big hit. Um, with that hit, the dragon head uh, looks pretty uh, bad off. Uh, now, Magnus, my dude, you do have to take half of that damage, and I am very, very oh, sorry no. about that. That's fine. That's fine. You I know am, what? I get it. it. Was, I think it's what you would have wanted. Uh, so that's 15 damage to you, Magnus. Yeah, down to 96. The Merle giveth and the taco taketh away. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm still at 96 hit points, so I'm doing okay. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I'm a tank. Uh, the dragon head looks pretty bad off after that hit. The other two heads uh, look... Pretty hurt, but not as bad off as this dragon head, because the dragon head, the chimera's up next. The dragon head tries to barf up a spout of flame, but nothing really comes out. Uh, So instead, it uh, is going to snap at you, Magnus, since you goaded it. Good luck. Uh, 19 versus AC. Uh, What if I'm at 19? Uh, No, on attack rolls, the attacker hits. Uh, Okay, well then I got hit. Okay. Uh, he bites into you for 13 points of damage. That's fine. Uh, the ram's head is going to charge at you, Magnus. Uh, it's not ram- uh, charging. It's like just like standing still and trying to butt you. Uh, that's just 15, though, so that's a miss. Yes. And then the lion head is going to take disadvantage and try to attack Merle. Okay. Uh, that was a 19 versus AC, which I imagine hits, but... It hits. Uh, 17 versus AC? No. And my AC is 18. Okay. Uh, it, it gets a like a, its mouth on you, uh, but uh, its teeth do not uh, get through your armor, and it retracts. Next up is Magnus. Because I want the extra AC, I'm now going to switch to one-handed rail splitter and get my shield out. Okay. That will give me a plus two to AC. Um, then I'm going to... I'm going to try to get on its back. Oh, okay. We're dragons dogmaing this shit now, then. Yeah. What would that be? Is that acrobatics or athletics? Um, it's gonna try to buck you off. So I think it's gonna be for you probably athletics versus my dexterity or cool. straight. Yeah, probably dexterity. Well, uh, I rolled a twenty-one. I got a sixteen plus seven, so twenty-three. Okay. Yeah, you you are on this thing's back and you're grabbed on. I guess that's probably one of my actions, right? Or is that the move? That is, we'll say that is that. I mean, that's one of your actions. Yes. 
Okay, and then I will attack the base of the dragon neck. Okay, we'll say you have advantage since you kind of have a good position on it now. Okay, good, because that was a one. <laughs> okay, so 15 plus 7, 22, yep. 23. That is a hit. 8 plus 6, 14 points of damage. Uh, okay, the dragon head, it looks like unconscious now. The dragon head is just kind of hanging limp. Cool. Uh, that's it, right? Because you did two actions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Merle, you are up. I am going to cast a brand new one. Mm. Insect Plague. Holy <laughs> shit. Okay. Okay. Swarming, yes. biting locusts mm-hmm. fill a 20-foot radius sphere Excellent. centered on a point you choose within range. A creature takes 4d10 piercing damage. But it has to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. You're just gonna oh, you you're just gonna aim that right at Magnus or like you're gonna just sort of no, put that one. I'm going to I'm gonna aim the sphere at the feet of the chimera. I don't think that dog's gonna hunt, because that would mean you're aiming it into the into the ground. The conceit for area of effect attacks is that they have collateral damage, and the only way to like abate that is to plan around it okay I, I hit him with the sphere okay you got 96 <laughs> points right He's magnus fine. sure what do i We're what happened all it? the points you had constitution constitution you say yeah yes okay what's well, a 20 what up what's up now yeah the crit 20 the bugs swarm around me you're dodging on my fucking neo all right so i should need to ro- uh, roll I, four d t- well no i rolled a 19 i think this so. thing's saved but it has to move right or else Creature takes 4d10 piercing damage on a failed save. Right. Or half as much damage on a successful one. Okay, so there's the half damage. So you still roll damage. Oh, cool. Wait, is that the 10? All right, 7, 5, 0. Oh, that's 10. 10, yeah. Well, so what is it up to so far? 22. 7, 22. 5, 22. 19, wow. a 9, 21. But half that, right? Yeah. Okay. No, half of 31. 31. Okay, so 15 and a half points. Uh, just 15. Even though Aww. I critted, Griffin? Okay, you round up to 16. Yeah, no, wait, even, though you, e- even though you critted. Uh, okay. That seems unlikely. <laughs> um, As it takes it that... so constitute, though. It takes that damage, and the lion head now droops down uh, and is unconscious... And with that, the goat head, like, bleats loudly, and it rears back uh, on its back legs. And Magnus, you, you, uh, uh, Magnus, I guess make a, uh, make a deck save. Uh, I mean, eh, eight. Okay, yeah, you get thrown off its back to the ground, um, but you don't take any damage. Uh, and the, uh, goat head, the only sort of remaining head... Uh, and the rest of its body uh, extends those wings, and it starts to flap them to fly off. Um, and it gets a few feet off the ground, and then an arrow comes in and hits that goat head right, right in the, right in the dome. And with that, uh, the chimera just instantly falls to the ground dead. Um, and when you look behind you, uh, oh, please be Hawkeye. Please be Hawkeye. It's, it's the guy himself, the Hawk, Hawkeye. the Hawk guy. Um, you, uh, you see a few people, you see a, uh, a half elf, uh, man who is, uh, kind of gruff and dressed mostly in pelts. And he's holding this big ass longbow, um, uh, in like attack position, so he was the one who shot that arrow. He's got a short, shaggy beard and dark red hair. Uh, with him, you see a wood elf who uh, has dark purple hair and nearly identical leather armor um, to to the the half elf with the bow, uh, and she's holding this knotted uh, natural wooden staff. And uh, uh, these two are standing at, in like combat poses. Um, and from out behind a tree, sort of cautiously poking his head outward, you see a kind of scrawny human man uh, who is no older than like 20 years old, probably. But he's dressed in like this finery that is white and, and gold. He is the cleanest thing in a 10 mile radius. Is there a role? Is there a skill that would like let you know who people are? Like in fourth edition, there was Streetwise. 
Is there anything like that in this game? What would you roll to like know who history. to like history or I, I have legend lore a spell. Um, if I describe I a person, it no if I inside a person. Yeah, make a how about just make a straight up um, intelligence roll. Oh, natural. I got an eighteen. Twenty. I got a natural four. Um, Magnus and Taco, you recognize this guy. He is Lord Artemis Sterling, the ruler of Neverwinter, and the most powerful man in the world. But I get the credit on the kill, right? Oh, death. Okay. <laughs> MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Ty is a pedantic person. I think when he pronounces these words, it's, it's in a very show off y way. Gyro. Gyro. Sacre bleu. Sacre bleu. Ayers Rock. Uluru. <laughs> <laughs> what you are witnessing is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with real cases. They call in via Skype to Judge John Hodgman's court, the real people's court. Now I call you to Judge John Hodgman's internet court. Find it at MaximumFun.org or wherever you download podcasts. Mugs, shirts, stickers, patches, tanks, and more are yours for the purchasing at MaxFunStore.com. Hey, you already love the podcasts, so why not take this to the next level and outfit your home and bod with our merch? MaxFunStore.com. Because if you have to wear a shirt, it should be one of ours.